Alright guys, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to put stuff from a computer onto a graphing calculator. The graphic calculator that I will be putting on is a Casio Prism FX CG50. And it looks like this. Except it doesn't have this extra stuff on the bottom. Um, I'll go through just putting like a normal file on there and then how to run stuff on this because I know some people want to use this. This is a Game Boy color emulator for this calculator. Um, here is this is what Mario this is Mario, for example. And then there's just normal file well there's there's normal files like here's Conway's Game of Life and here we have Lua ZM, which is a shell. I believe it's a shell. Maybe it's not called a shell. I don't exactly know all the technical terms, but it, it runs Lua files. And then this is just an overclock. You don't really need to know about that. Look it up yourself if you need to. Just basic programs, though. Like, this is an RPG right here. And basic programs are put on here differently. They're actually simpler. So I, I will do a basic program, a normal file, and how to put ROMs onto on in here to run on here to run onto the Game Boy Color thing um, so let me just get some stuff pulled up and I'll show you guys that in a minute so here we have the Prizoop Game Boy emulator for Casio Prism FX CG10 CG20 um, in my experience almost everything FX CG10 and FX CG20 is compatible with the 50, which is what I have. There's not much made for the 50 yet since it's only been out for about a year. So what you want to do is you want to download the file. Well, if you scroll down here, this is the file contents. You want to pay attention to G3A. We'll get back to that in a minute. And this is the folder it's in. But you click on this to download it. You'll see it is downloaded in the corner. Well, that's on my Chromebook. Uh, we don't need this anymore. So we got our we got our file. Actually, I'm just I'm gonna go download a random ROM. Uh, give me a minute. So now you see I have gotten Pokemon Yellow down here. That is the ROM I will put onto my calculator. Um, now. What you want is your cord. It's the end of it looks like this for the prism. And the other end looks like this, the USB for your computer. And if you don't have one of these cords, you're not going to transfer anything. And you may as well exit this video because you cannot put anything on your calculator without this cord, to my knowledge. If you don't have this, you must have lost it or you bought your calculator like like used because if you buy it anew this comes with the packaging I believe um, so what you want to do is you want to plug this in into the computer like so and then you plug this in into your calculator so here's my calculator and it's got two spots to plug stuff in there's this spot for the USB and this, I think, is a two and a half millimeter jack. Um, this calculator has no sound, but if you plug a two and a half millimeter jack in there, and then you plug like headphones or an aux cord, which I believe are three and a half millimeters into there, you can have sound from this. There's also like some way to hook up speakers to this using two and a half millimeter jacks. I don't have an adapter for that, so I can't use this. But you need this for the um, transferring. So we're gonna put our cord in there. It's very hard to do all this one-handed, by the way. I don't have advanced recording equipment, as you can obviously tell by the high quality of this video. A screen like this should pop up if the connection is successful. Um, if you want to transfer files over, you want USB flash. You want to choose that one. So, F1. And it will prepare the USB cord, and you need to wait a little bit for that to go usually takes no more than 10 to 20 seconds if 
for some reason it seems to take longer on a Chromebook than a computer, which I think is a bit weird, but what do I know? Now you're going to want to wait until your computer detects the external device. Removable device detected. It has now detected your device. And after it has done that, you want to go to your files. Um, it's different in Windows. In Windows, your your stuff you downloaded should still. I have no I have no idea how to use Mac OS. I've never used a Mac OS, but for Windows, it would be in Downloads, and this has a search bar somewhere around here, and you can search for your file. On the way it is on a Chromebook, I can just scroll to the bottom, and the bottom has my most recently downloaded things. So there's my Prisoop emulator, and there's my yellow ROM. Um, so what you would do for transferring it to the calculator, the calculator is USB drive. This is all the contents of the calculator. If you have a brand new calculator, you should not have this much stuff on it. I have put a lot of stuff on my calculator already. But you want to go to Downloads, and you're going to go to your file downloaded. And if you're on a um, Windows, you can right click, and there'll be a button called Extract here. You push Extract, and then you click on the unzipped folder, and the stuff will be in there. If you come up, you click Open, and it pops over on the side, and then you, this reels the files. Um, this right here, if you just want the emulator, don't worry about this. Um, this is a program for compressing ROMs so that it takes up less space in your calculator. I don't worry about that. You want this for your calculator. Uh, now, I'm not actually going to do this because... I already have this on my calculator, but you would what you would do is you'd push, you'd right click, and you push copy. Or you could push, I don't, no you can't push cut, can you? Cut or copy, whatever. And then you'd go to your draw, USB, and you would paste it into the root of your calculator. And the root of your calculator is just this base screen. Um, these are all folders, don't click on any folders if you are doing a normal file. Just paste it right here. So you just click you just click paste and it would just it would it would copy it over there and sometimes on a Chromebook it'll say it didn't copy correctly but in general it does like see it's there now and it says it didn't copy right but it does it does it does work I'm just gonna delete this because I don't need this on here because I already have it like I said um now, this, that's the, this is the exact same thing you do with ROMs. You go to your ROM. So, my ROM's right here. Alright. You downloaded ROM. You open it. Um, sometimes they'll have a folder in here, and you have to click on the folder to get to this file. But most ROMs just have this file right here. You copy that file. And you do the exact same thing. You just paste it right in here. And I don't have this ROM on my calculator, so I'll go ahead and paste it. You just paste it. This is the root of the calculator. Just paste it right here into the root of the calculator. Um, because your Prisoop, Prisoop is the computer emulator, remember, it will automatically detect that file in your calculator. And upon clicking on it and using it, um, you can play that game. Now, I'm going to pause this for a minute while it copies yellow over. Okay, I have copied yellow over. Okay. Um, but when you put ROMs on here to run on Prisoop, you have to rename them. Um, excluding the file type on the end right here, it has to be no larger than eight characters long, so I'm just going to put P... P yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it's any more than eight characters, it will not run in Prisoop. I don't know why. Um, if you go to the website, I'm pretty sure it explicitly says you have to rename it to like six to eight characters. And so, there. It is renamed now. You push enter. Now, that's that. You're done. That's that. You're done now. That's how you put stuff onto this part of the calculator. If you get Lua ZM to run Lua files, you just put the Lua files here too, but you can probably figure that out yourself. If you get a basic program, you have to, in order to copy that over, you go to main menu, or main memory, excuse me, and then you paste it in here. 
no, that's not right. Don't listen to me. You go to here, and then you click on program. You go to main memory folder, program folder, and then you paste it. And these are the programs. Like, that's the, this is the RPG game right here I was talking about. And then, once you're done copying all that stuff over, you want to eject, I think it's called eject, you want to eject your drive over. I'm just going to close these out too, because if you don't do that and you just unplug your drive, sometimes it can damage the computer or the calculator, or not transfer stuff override, or corrupt files, just don't do that. So close out of that, and then you're going to want to X out of here, and then you just unplug your calculator, and it should say updating memory upon unplugging complete and then we're just gonna click menu and we should have our files on here um, you can make sure you have enough memory before you put this stuff on you can go to here to check your memory main storage has a lot less memory than storage memory does your main memory has less than the storage memory does but most of your stuff can go on storage memory your basic programs go in program on your main memory, so you, those are kind of limited. Especially if you have like sh a shell program like Lines XT or something, it takes up quite a lot of memory. Um, see, I only have 7,400 bytes for you. I probably should delete some stuff off of here. But storage memory has plenty on it. I, ha I have about one and a half million bytes left. I think it has like eight. I have a lot of stuff on here. I probably should delete some of this too. But here I'll show it in action. So, if you transferred it all over right, this would appear here. It would say Prisoop and have the Game Boy on it. And then you push EXE right here, EXE to run it. And then your ROMs will show up on this list. And this ROM, this ROM, and this one I already had on it. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, Game & Watch Gallery 2, World Cup. This is Pokemon Yellow. This is the one that came off of the computer that you saw with your very two little eyes. And you would push this button right here run and I found that some ROMs don't work very well on Prisoop on this calculator on the 50. I don't know. I think it's more compatible with the 10 and 20 because it was made for the 10 and 20. The Castillo has like a slightly faster processing system and stuff so it doesn't exactly work with everything but you should be able to push F6 for play and if you have an FAQ text file that has the same file name as your ROM like if I had an FAQ guide Downloaded it on here as a TXT file, a text file, text only file is what that is. And I had named it P Yellow, so it has the same file name as my ROM. Then I could go to FAQ and it would be in the FAQ. Um, and then when you push play, you push any button. I usually push shift and it loads the game and it has no sound. Let me unplug that because it doesn't. Um, you can go to menu and presoup. Go to menu to change this stuff there's frame skip there's you can map whatever keys or what like what buttons are like what what buttons a and what buttons the arrow keys like because this isn't always best for direction like in mario i make this this right and this left and this up and this down and i do that because right and left is about all you need in mario and down sometimes so you put that right there and then up is rarely used and then i make this a and b because it's a lot easier to play like that it's a lot more comfortable it's weird having um, this as the D-pad in Mario, and then using this as A and B. It's just really uncomfortable feeling, because it's like the opposite of the NES controller. But yeah, we have those, and then... Let's play. I have F6 set as start. So as you can see, it's Pokemon Yellow in all of its glory. Um, um, we got... New game, yada 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 that. Um, I'll show you what I mean by the... Yeah, that's ROMs. That's where you pick ROMs. That's settings. That's FAQ. I don't have any files around in this. See, it says TXT file. That's what I was talking about. I have one for Mario, though. We'll go to Mario. Um, I'll just show you guys it again. Yeah, it's running. You can also save and load stuff. Like, I have this is my save button and this is my load button. So here, see, watch. I'll push this button and it'll load my save that I had. And then if I push this, it'll save again. You'll see a little buffering symbol up here, and it'll temporarily freeze, and it's saving. Um, now we're going to go back to menu, and since I have an FAQ for this, you go to here, and this is my FAQ on it. I put this on here just to see what it was. So this is the entire FAQ on this game. And the reason it pops up on this ROM, not like yellow, is because this FAQ 
has the exact same name as the ROM. So my ROM I have named as SMB Dell for Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, except it's a .gbc file, which means it's a Game Boy Color file. It's a Game Boy Color ROM file. This FAQ is also called SMB Dell for Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, but it's a .txt file, which stands for text file, which is a text-only file. It's basically just plain text stuffed into a file. And there's, yeah, that's this. So that's how you get those on there. Um, like I said, if you go over basic programs, basic programs would be in your program thing. And when I say basic, it doesn't mean it's a simple program. I'm talking about it's written in basic. Basic is a programming language. I do not know how to write in it. I just know how to play games in it. Um, like, this is like a Geometry Dash-ish game, and this is just kind of a weird game. So you have to get a program to play these because they're written using, like, text. And then usually you have to push shift, AC on, or just AC on, and it'll say break, and you push exit to leave. Um, yeah, there's that. Um, that's how you put ROMs and stuff on here and get them to run. Um, if you guys want me to show you how to do anything else, like how an overclock works, sort of, or like Lua, anything related to Lua files, or like Conway's Game of Life or stuff. Um, that's it, so, yeah. Um, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave some suggestions in the comments for literally anything, any video. Um, I'm sorry this video was kind of long, but I tried to be kind of in-depth about it, because I had to figure this out on my own, it took me a while. This is kind of like a noobs, complete idiot's guide to how to put stuff on here. And yeah, there's it. I mean, I'm not saying you're an idiot if you don't know how to do this. It's not very common knowledge. Unless you have a calculator. A lot of people, they get graphing calculators just use them for their math class, and that's it. But, yeah, that's all. Bye.